What are the girls like? Are they beautiful? Are they hot? Are they sexy? How do they dress? Here's your story, let's begin. The water's fine, come on, dive in. The future's here, it's right before your eyes. Where's the best place to find a girl? Will they sleep with you? Will they go home with you? Are they sexually liberated? Do they want to get married? Are they real? Are they sincere? Can you trust them? Yeah, welcome to my world. So, girls, well, uh, one of the questions was, uh, why am I alone? Why don't I have a girl? I thought I answered that before, but I'm not here for that. I've spent my life with that. I'm kind of taking a break. Um, I certainly didn't come here looking for that. If that's what I was looking for, be it something uh, fun and recreational or be it something permanent, marriage, girlfriend, that kind of thing, any of those categories, I would not have chosen Ecuador as a place to come. Now, that's not to say there aren't nice girls here. That's not to say that uh, you can't get a girlfriend here and all of that. But if you could line up a list of all the strikes against you, um, coming to Ecuador would be that list. So, what do I mean by that? What are the girls like? Well, first of all, I was asked how they look. I think the girls are fine. Girls are beautiful everywhere in the world. It depends on your taste. If you like blonde hair, blue eyes, this really isn't the place to come. You'll find that, but they're, you know, pretty, pretty rare. You have to look up the makeup of the, of the country, and I don't know that this is going to be exactly accurate, but in the ballpark of, you probably have 5% of the country that's Caucasian. You have probably 70% of the country that's a mixture, and you probably have the rest of the country that's indigenous, native people. It, it may be more native, indigenous people than that. I don't know. So if you like that look, then it's a place for you to go. Uh, if you're looking for Caucasian, well, when you figure the percentage is about 5%, you know, your chances are pretty slim. Now, I'm going to get right to the crux of it, and I sort of did a, a video on this once before, but uh, we're really going to get to the heart of it. And to everyone who has no interest in this, if you're not a guy looking for a girl, uh, exit the video now because you're just wasting your time. And I don't want to get comments, well, what about a girl looking for a guy? And I, I'm not a girl. I can't speak to that. You have to talk to somebody who's, who's female in that situation. So what do you have here? You have a very traditional society. Now, I'm going to speak in general terms, as I always do. Uh, there's always exceptions, and so I, I don't need to get a flurry of comments about the exceptions. I, I already know that. You don't have to tell me about those exceptions. But attitudes are different in different regions of the country. For example, if you're on the coast, you have a bit more of a, I'd say, a party atmosphere. You have maybe less or different traditions than you have up in the mountains. And since we're in Cuenca, and this is about Cuenca, Ecuador, I'm going to talk, speak to Cuenca very conservative. If you date someone and let's say you wanted to get married, you have to go see the parents and ask their permission and go through all these rituals. I think there's a fair amount of guys in the world, in, in the United States in particular, that think they can go to another country and have success with women that they couldn't have in their own country. One of the complaints is American women, they're too independent, 
they're too opinionated, there's a war on the sexes, and it makes them weary, and, and I get that. Finding somebody who's compliant isn't necessarily the answer. And in my opinion, you have a lot of guys that are basically, and I don't even mean this word in such a bad context, but I'm going to say they're basically predators in that they're looking for a situation that they can benefit from. So guys go to Thailand, for example. Why do they go to Thailand? They go to Thailand because women are everywhere, and if you're a 60-year-old guy, you can have yourself a 20-year-old girl for next to nothing. And that's what it is. It's a, it's a marketplace there. Are you going to find a true love? Are you going to find somebody that's going to be with you for the rest of your days? It's possible, but not very likely. Uh, another popular place, and uh, a little less so, uh, and it's a beautiful place. I've been there. I've been to Thailand. Um, the Philippines is a place you can go and you can find somebody, and you can find somebody sincere. It's less of a marketplace. It kind of depends on where you're looking. And Philippine girls, uh, the, most of them have this weird white guy fetish. So if you're a white American, um, that just floats their boat. And so you can go there as a 60-year-old guy and be very successful finding a relationship. As a matter of fact, it's almost difficult not to find a relationship. Where else? Well, it used to be Russia, Ukraine, and not so much anymore from what I understand. Colombia is a great place if you want to go and have a relationship or recreation or whatever. In Colombia, there's a very liberal attitude about things like that. Um, while there's still tradition and the original culture, uh, they're a lot more open about things like that. And an advantage in Colombia is younger girls, when they decide that they want to settle down, love to look for older men because younger guys there are very macho, don't treat them very well, and so they look for older guys. And so, you know, that's a place to go. Now, are any of those things in Ecuador? Not really. So if you're looking to come to Ecuador thinking that it's something like that, if you're one of those guys that's out watching all these uh, girl sites and uh, tours where you can come and meet girls and have one night stands and all of those crazy things, Ecuador is not the place. Cuenca, Ecuador is not the place for that. You're gonna come here and you're gonna find it very difficult to meet people and have a relationship. Now, I'm not talking about gringo community meeting the gringo community. If you're 60 years old and you're perfectly content with a 60-year-old lady, um, there's plenty of those matchups, I, I would assume. Um, and I think there's some very nice ladies in Cuenca. And you'll have a lot in common. But if you're c coming here with the idea that you're going to find what you can find in these other countries in that you're going to come here and you're 60 years old and you're going to find a 25 year old beauty who worships the ground you walk on fat chance there's an interesting thing ecuador is almost unique and before i did this i did a little bit of research i went to some dating sites and i looked to see you know what was on there and that kind of thing uh, so I wasn't just talking on my butt. And you'll see girls in Colombia on dating sites, and they'll put ages from 6 to 60, from 99 years. It, you'll see that. You'll see that for a lot of places, Dominican Republic, uh, all over the place, Peru to a lesser extent. But in Ecuador, if the girl is 25, She's going to put a range of like maybe 23 to 28. If she's 30, she's going to put 28 to 35. You'll see that I got bored of looking, but I must have skipped through hundreds of profiles like that. And 
very few exceptions. In other words, they are serious about finding somebody that's in their age group, in their um, comfort zone, and it is not a 25-year-old being with a 60-year-old guy. It's, it's complete opposite of what you'll find in Colombia. So, now I know that there's going to be people that pick this apart and they're going to say, yeah, but what about this and what about that? And I understand that. And, but, you know, I don't want to make a three-hour documentary on, on finding and dating a girl in Ecuador. Because of the sheer volume of questions I get on this, I felt obliged to hopefully put it to rest. If, if you're coming to Ecuador and your primary reason is to find a relationship it's a horrible reason to come. That is not the reason to come. You may find one. If you're patient, if you learn the language, if you get out and socialize a fair amount, maybe work in some volunteer work or who knows what. Church, you can meet somebody and you can have a long-term courtship with them and maybe eventually it can turn into a marriage. All those things are possible, but you're not going to fly in here with a bunch of money in your pocket, take advantage of that situation, and capture yourself a 25-year-old girl who's, who's basically bought and paid for. And I really don't think Ecuador is going to be the place for that sort of thing. So um, come with someone. Or if you get here and you feel lonely, you can fly over to Colombia or go back to the United States and hook up with the old friend from high school you haven't seen forever and she's divorced from her, her marriage or something like that. But, um, so that's a story on girls in Ecuador. You know you could.